This is an ancient village on the Herefordshire side of the Forest of Dean called Ruradine. Most of the families are colliers and smallholders who have descended from families who have lived in these parts for generations. Across the road is the malt shovel, one of the two remaining pubs. And up until a few years ago, well indeed today, were I to go into the bar parlour and ask who killed the bears, I might get a very rough reception. Why? To find the answer, one has to go back 75 years to April the 26th, 1889, when two bears were killed and four men were severely beaten. The bears were the property of four Frenchmen who were touring the forest, providing some well-needed entertainment. Up until this time, the troop had been very popular, but later in the day, in a neighboring village, a foul rumor was spread that these bears had killed a child and maimed a woman. This prompted the colliers in the pubs to pour out and attack the party. And they killed the bears, the men were severely beaten, and fled to the woods. Subsequently, this rumor was proved false, but too late, for the people of Ruradin have been blamed for this dastardly act. But were they, in fact, the culprits? The rumor started here in Cinderford, some three miles away. As usual, as the miners came off their shifts in the local coal mines, they retired to the Old Engine Inn, which is now a village hall, and the Mitre, which today is a private house. Slaking the dust from their throats, they were incensed by this story and set off in pursuit of the unsuspecting Frenchmen, who were now on their way to Ruardine for another performance with their Russian bears. The Frenchmen, Gabriel Yass, Gabriel Huguet, Thomas Sergeon, and Alpha Gerond, and their two performing bears, completely unaware of this impending danger, were making their way through the forest of Dean. Suddenly, at a junction, they found themselves surrounded by 40 black-faced men in strange clothes, who set about them with stick and stone. This treatment continued for the next hour or so, during which time the smaller of the two bears was done brutally to death. By the time Ruradin was reached, the mob had swelled to over 200. The Frenchmen, now in a state of panic, took to the woods, leaving the remaining bear to jog on alone into Ruradin. This unfortunate animal, sorely wounded and frightened out of its wits, was pursued by some of the younger members of the mob and chased through Ruradin and was finally shot in a farmyard on the far side of the village, whereupon some bloodlusting fellow cut its throat. Two of the Frenchmen were given sanctuary by the villagers, who up till now have taken the blame. All this happened 75 years ago, so there are very few people here in Ruradin that remember the incident. But one such person is 84-year-old Mr. Thomas Thompson. Mr. Thompson, what do you remember of this incident of the bears? Well, um, what I remember is that I went to see him the next morning and I, I didn't see nothing of them being killed or anything of like that. And I went to see the, the two of them. And I know the man has um, shot the one. Well, I know the man has killed the one and, and shot the other. Was that a Ruridine man? Yes, both of them. Was. Why did they shoot them? Well, because it put them out of their misery. Do you think it was Ruridine men that caused all the trouble? Oh, no, certainly not. Who was it, do you think? Well, it come, they come from, started from Cinderford. Well, that is the story of the bears, but it doesn't quite end there, because on the 13th of May of that year, at the Little Dean Petty Sessions, 14 men were fined a total of 85 pounds, and a subscription was raised by the magistrates to compensate the Frenchmen. Personally, I think Ruradine has carried its stigma too long. Now, perhaps, it's time for Cinderford to accept the responsibility. Good night.